<clears throat> okay, good afternoon. Uh, here this afternoon to talk about uh, Laura Chips. Uh, so you guys are hopefully in the right place for, for that. And it's really to say, you know, we've got a, a range of different uh, ICs which are behind the Laura products that you're all designing and making, and many hundreds of products. And really the question I get a lot from the field is, you know, which, pro which IC should we be choosing for our products? You know, we've got the first generation and now some newer parts. And it's not always as, as, as simple a decision as just using the latest one. Okay. So just to set the scene really uh, for, for Laura, uh, we viewing this as really the tagline is the DNA of IoT. And the, the reason for saying that is, you know, the Laura is an enabling technology. So in, in, allowing us to enable devices to connect over low power networks, uh, supports the networking technologies, and also the applications which are written to make these uh, wireless chips into real products and deliver fun, interesting things. Okay. <clears throat> so where does it fit in the, in the system? There are lots and lots of different RF technologies. Um, and really this slide is, is one of my favorites really to show how, how we view LoRa and Wi-Fi and cellular really sit together um, you know, Wi-Fi is for really for higher bandwidth applications. You know, cellular has been really legacy for machine to machine in the IoT space. And where LoRa fits in there across that is, you know, it's, it's really long range, which is great for our devices. It can connect deep inside buildings, uh, very long distances out, outdoors, uh, incredibly low energy. So this is key for making devices which we installed and fitted and last potentially years or even 10 plus years on, on, a, on a battery. And like cellular, LoRa has security built in from the very start, so very advanced encryption, which is more and more important these days for products. Okay. So looking at range, we mentioned long range. Um, you know, this chart shows it quite well, you know, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, it's really for personal area and short area networks um, through to um, Laura, which we say is 10 plus miles out, out of doors, which is pretty impressive for a, for a very, very tiny chip. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. um, a couple of stats, you know, uh, different numbers. Uh, there's a, a test done between actually a couple of satellites. So probably an unusual use case, but it shows that you know, if you're up there in space, um, like the talks from Nikola this morning and, and Lacuna, you can do some really interesting things with the technology uh, too. Okay. So just to recap the key features, and you know, we've mentioned range a lot, um, particularly key for getting deep inside buildings to connect those, those devices. Uh, low power is, is really key, and the new chips we'll talk about have actually improved that very significantly compared to the other ones. Um, very scalable, our gateways, even the, the mini hub gateways that were mentioned this morning, support lots and lots of sensors, even with that small, small hub. And we're continuing to drive down the cost of the solutions to make these products cheaper to develop, quicker to develop, and deploy. Okay. So the question is, which LoRa IC do we, do we choose? Should we just use the latest one? Well, maybe, but there are a couple factors in there which may help you make that decision. So the roadmap we have there, and we'll really try to reposition this and saying that the, the first generation of LoRa chips we have, which is the SX12-7X family, which have been with us for a, for a little while now, have been using lots and lots of uh, devices. Uh, to date, over 80 million devices have been shipped using these chips in lots of different applications there. But th technology moves on and performance demands move on. So we come up with a second generation of LoRa chips, which was launched through the middle of last year, uh, which is the 126X family. Uh, I'll come into the, the key differentiators on that in a moment. Um, and then on the gateway side, we have two, two families of parts for gateways. Um, typically, we've talked about macro cells, like the big gateways that would be up outdoors on, on, a, on a building, and the smaller pico cells, which would typically be uh, indoor, indoor applications. So the 12.7X family, um, the first generation of, of radios, uh, very, very flexible, huge amounts of registers which are exposed. And this has allowed people to do you know, clearly LoRa applications, which, which we love, uh, but also the flexible enough to support some other uh, proprietary protocols which are used in certain, certain industries as well. 
And going forward onto the, onto the new family, we've really optimized the product, targeted it very, very specifically for LoRa applications. And this has allowed us to, to take a technology leap. We've made it a smaller package, so it's half the size it was before. Uh, very important for wearable applications, smaller sensors you can get there. But the really huge change we have is on the, on the radio performance. The power consumption is one half of what it was before. And even on the transmit currents, we've reduced this down to 75%. So the implications on your design means that smaller batteries can be used in the application and still maintaining that battery life is a very, very significant time. Uh, um, some other things we've done there, we added in some, some extra capabilities into the parts. We've simplified the software, so it's more of an API level for, for software development now. Uh, that makes things simpler. And we've also integrated in some of the power management chips to make a more integrated design. So this allows us to run with, uh, with, with, the, with the internal DC-DC converter if power consumption is your absolute requirement. There's also an LDO there for designs which are not quite as uh, power sensitive, and we can reduce the cost of the bomb slightly by working with an LDO. Okay. So, a bit of an eye chart. Don't worry, it's not a test. There won't be an exam afterwards. Uh, but it's really showing how we position the parts there. Uh, the new family is the 1261, 2, and, and, and 8. And there's the, the wider range of parts in the, in the second family. So how would we choose between them? Um, really, for the first gen, um, the main split is, in, is on a regional basis. The 1272 uh, found applications in the US and, and EMEA regions, and that's because of the frequency support on, on the chips. Uh, we made two other variants of that as well, one with a wider frequency support, which allows you to make a, more of a worldwide product. Uh, maybe with multi-antennas on the front for, for the regional support. And um, we have a, a China version only as well, which has you know, a very limited frequency range for specifically for, for that market. <clears throat> so on the new family of parts, the, we mentioned that the power consumption is, is different, but the key thing we have as well, the parts have the full frequency range for the ISM band, right the way down from 150 megahertz through to almost a gigahertz. And that frequency coverage is continuous right the way through. So these are truly are worldwide parts. For all the frequency bands we're allowed to use in the, in the ISM band, and, and regional parameters are, are continually being updated by the LoRa Alliance with the channel maps and frequencies that can be used. And you can design with this chip knowing this part is going to be able to support all of that going forward as well, which is, which is very, very key. Now, I mentioned worldwide design. Obviously, a part that, which works in China, and Europe, and America has a lot of different requirements on the antenna front. Um, and there was a very good uh, presentation at this event last year by my colleague Oliver, who's in the audience there. And you know, go back and have a look at that if you want to know more about, about the antenna matching. Um, this slide may have come for your deck, uh, Olivier. Um, and really what it's showing is that um, it's just really the front end here that we particularly have to change. So you could have a single PCB design with an antenna for Europe. You could rematch it for the US or other regions. So use that core design from us. Really speeds up your product development and getting those, those certified products out there faster. <clears throat> So the next step from you know, choosing the chip is actually, you know, where do I get started? You know, I want to make a design. I want to I kick off my, my product. And to support that, we have a, a large amount of resources through our, our website, through our partners and FAE teams, and a lot of evaluation kits to, to choose from. Um, again, a number of variants we have in there for different frequencies. Some parts, some of these boards have TCXOs on there if you have a very wide temperature requirement for operation uh, and so on. We've also brought out some, uh, some very, very small uh, shields which uh, plug into the usual development platforms that people have, whether that's uh, Nucleos or, or Arduinos or, or, or Raspberry Pis. And the great thing around this is the, the core RF design here for the radio, we've gone through this and optimized this very, very carefully and ensured that if you take that PCB design 
and you cut and paste it into your product, it's going to work. We've matched it. We've gone through all that evaluations for it. So that's taken away some of the RF design work that, that may, may well have been needed. And, and these boards are already available uh, from the usual, uh, usual places. But the thing is, well, I mean, we, you, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel, you know, un unless you really want to. You can take our designs and, and do them, or use that as a basis for your, your, your own custom design to fit the, a particular size or, or requirements. But in addition to that, we have a lot of other options available. You know, from a ch buying the chips from us, through to buying small system in package designs from, uh, from companies like Murata and, and, and others, through to kits and modules from a wide and very fast growing number of companies these days. We're trying to track who's building these things so we can build them into a catalog. So you can go to our website or the Alliance website and this will give you details of what's available and, and you can find whether it's evaluation kits or even end products which are sensors that you may need for your, for your, your application. Another thing we get asked is, is, you know, what are all the pieces in the puzzle here? And we've spoken briefly about uh, the chip itself, but there's a lot of additional th steps from that to making an entire end-to-end -end product. And you know, we provide a lot of these things. We talked about the chips and, and modules, sensors, uh, gateways and base stations, and then the network and application server. And again, some really good talks so far today we go through what's happening in the, in the network side and the cloud side to continue to evolve LoRa to add more features as, as we go forward. Okay. Um, this, this link here is, is be your, your best friend for finding information. Uh, we're, we're updating our website all the time. We've put a lot of material up there over the last, last year and particularly the last couple of months. I uh, put in the, the use cases, the hardware reference designs we have, a lot of videos and as, as material as well. Um, and my ask to you guys as well is that if you're developing a, a really interesting product or a particular use case, reach out to us. We'll be happy to, to hear from you, understand why you've used LoRa in that way and the benefits that, it, that it's got for your, your customers and an ROI. You know, and we're happy to, to write a use case or a white paper and we'll get this up on our website or, or share with the Laura Alliance and have it published there. So that's a really good thing for us to, to grow the community and see how you know, people are really using these products in the real world to solve real problems. Okay. And just to wrap up on this, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a simple statement, but we truly believe that Laura is the de facto standard for LP1. Now, it really solves the challenges we have for that. Uh, for not just for the power, the, uh, the performance we have, the range, it's really ticking the boxes. And as I mentioned very briefly earlier, with the security that's in the system at multi-layers, it really provisions this as a, as a very, very optimal solution for LP1. Okay, well, a few minutes for questions. You showed the power for, for the new chip. What about the TX current? The current consumption for on the TX side, that was only on the RX side shown on your slides. I didn't quite get all the question. Is, is it, how, how do we get the power consumption down so much on the chip? What is uh, the power consumption on the TX side? The, on, the, on the former platform, that was about 55 milliamps, if I uh, recall correctly. Yeah, we're down to about three quarters of that, so um, low 40s. Uh, the bigger difference is, is on the receive side where you know, we've halved that, that power consumption. More questions? Yeah, we've got one over there. Uh, is it possible to mix and match the uh, SX12 uh, 7 series with the previous yeah, the, is it possible to match the series? That's oh, ab absolutely. Um, I, should, I should have mentioned that, so thank you for the reminder. The, the first generation, the second generation of parts, so the 12.7X uh, family and the 126 x family, they're all compliant to the LoRa 1 standards, and they're totally interoperable. What about the 
are other layer radios compatible? I'll just for the, for the rest. <laughs> from, a, from a software point? Fully compatible. Yes. Fully compatible, good news. Yeah, as I said, the, the second generation, we've optimized it specifically, specifically for, for LoRa, LoRaWAN. So if, you, if that's your application, uh, that is absolutely the correct sh uh, chip to have. Um, there are some older applications where you may need some other proprietary protocol support. Uh, so in those cases, the, the, the Gen 1 family would still be proposed for that. Yeah, because that's more flexible. Yeah. So now we have this, this second generation. Um, in three years' time, where will we be? Oh, lots of things coming. Nic Nicola gave a few hints to that this morning. Uh, so I think that uh, through this year, it will be uh, very interesting for us. We're working very hard in developing uh, on the hardware side, a lot of software uh, coming from us as well. Um, so we'll keep you updated through the, through the year. OK, thank you very much. OK, thank you. David Armour.